Hello, everyone, and welcome to Layer by Layer, the show where we talk about what we're up to here at Slant3D and plus a few other things inside of the industry itself. So starting off here, let's see here what we got. Not a lot of 3D printing news this week, except for the fact that the whole 3D printing stock group has taken quite the tumble. Um, it's it's the, the stock situation with all of the publicly traded 3D printing companies right now is in an odd place. Um, even though pretty much all of them are losing money um, every year uh, in pretty large amounts, uh, a few of them, again, this is not stock advice. I'm not an investor, lawyer, whatever it was. This is for purely entertainment purposes, blah, blah, blah. Um, the stock prices of many of these companies right now undervalues the companies. And the reason is, is that so many of these companies have so much machinery just stored up. They have so many physical assets um, that the stock is almost lower than the market value of what they own, um, which is just sort of silly. Um, that's generally kind of a bad situation. That being said, they're losing money every quarter and every year, um, which kind of compensates for that because, you know, if you go bankrupt, who cares what machines you have in the room? Nobody else cares. Um, but there's still a bunch of them are pretty undervalued for the amount of value that they have, like physical priceable value, not just what people are willing to trade the stock for, but literally what they own and have. Um, and even uh, uh, patent portfolios and that kind of stuff. It, it's, kind, it's, it's in an odd place. Um, it's not that weird for the 3D printing group um, because so many of them are... 3D printing is still really misunderstood as an industry of what it can do and what is possible. And so many of these companies, people don't know how to value them. They, they're no longer considered growth stocks, really. Um, and so they're, and uh, the industry, and 3D printing had its day in 2016. And since then, it's kind of all gone downhill. Um, and we had our spike in 2021, and it's correcting from there. But even right now, this appears to be an overcorrection. And over on Fabaloo, there was a conversation about this. Um, but yeah, a lot, lot of companies down like 20% this week. Um, I think like Mark Forge took a giant hit. I think they're valued at like, like 150 million or so, I think. Somewhere around there. Um, so it it's just odd. Um, as a multiple of revenue, most of them are, 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 are trading at like 2 to 3x, which is pretty darn small, even for like a manufacturing company, if that's what they were. But so many of them have such higher value, higher margin products. But again, all of them are losing money every year. Uh, so anyhow, you got, yeah, Desktop Metal, Mark Forged, so on and so forth. Name the company. Almost all of them are going backwards. Um even though they have a lot of machinery stored up. The side note here too, if anybody down in the comments is like a stock guru, there is uh, inside of a balance sheet of many of these companies, there is a line item that has appeared in about the last year when everything started going south uh, in intangible assets. And it is a line item that I've seen multiple companies use who I consider to be in kind of bad places. And the, the line item is goodwill, goodwill and, and something or another. And if anybody's out there who's like a stock person, can you tell me how this is calculated? Because there's no way it's not just a made up number. There is no way you can put on your balance sheet without being full of complete BS. We have $20 million of goodwill. No, you don't. There, there's no such thing. Yes, you have brand value and that kind of stuff, but that is intangible. Apple has a lot of goodwill, and I'm pretty dang certain that does not exist anywhere on their balance sheet at all. Um, I've seen it only pop up on companies who have really bad balance sheets, uh, who are trying to bump up their assets, uh, and it's just it's odd. But again, this show is not investment advice. It's purely for entertainment purposes. Uh, anyhow. Comments from last week, the fixed pie. Ah, this is, um, so a couple weeks ago, I was talking uh, quite passionately about robotics and automation compared between different countries. And there were a lot of comments where people were like, oh yeah, but if you do add the robot and make a person 10 times more efficient, you just replace 10 hypothetical future workers. First of all, no. Um, well, let, let me take this back. Uh, steam engines, 
made people 10 times more efficient. And yet the Industrial Revolution most, was the most highly employed time in a long time. Um, and then automation and assembly lines made creation 10 times more efficient. What people don't understand is that when production capacity increases, prices are able to kind of drop, uh, generally able to drop, and then uh, the demand is then able to increase. This is like what Henry Ford did with the car. He was like, well, we're going to make the car a little bit cheaper so we can make more, so we can make the car a little bit cheaper, so we can make more, make the car a little bit cheaper because more people are going to buy them. Um, that was his philosophy, and it worked, seemed to work pretty well, um, especially in the early days. But th this idea, this comes from a thought that is very human, that whatever we have today is the amount that there is. That this is all there is, and this is all there ever will be. Um, and that's completely incorrect based upon human history. Every single year, the economy, the production capacity, everything else increases, even though the human population is just about flat right now um, and potentially even going to decline, but that's a different topic. Uh, so creating a more efficient system through automation to where you're able to produce more is part of the process and has always occurred. Um, making the process more efficient and replacing hypothetical future workers, buying a robot rather than hiring 10 more people um, is not the same thing. It is not the replacement of workers. It is an increase in production um, because what you are doing when you buy the robot is you increase the size of the pie. Rather than slicing up the pie you have with the 10 workers, you are making the pie larger so that then you can have other workers on the side. Because if the robot is so efficient producing 10 times more, then everything around the robot also has to produce 10 times more in order to functionally use the robot. So creating higher efficiency and getting more out of whatever you have is a, a way of creating a greater level of abundance um, so that more people can partake of this stuff. Because if you have a robot, it is cheaper to produce the part and now you're able to sell a part to more people. Therefore, you can produce more, which means that you have to make the rest of your factory larger, which means that you then hire more people. This is not a single fixed location thing. Um, there's so many kind of ripple out effects from creating efficiency in a manufacturing process, especially. So I, I wanted to address that because there seemed to be confusion about that. And it, and it is subtle, but it is true because you just have to look at the previous 100 years of increased automation and mechanization and see that people are employed just as much, if not more, no, employed more. There are more people on the planet today than there were 100 years ago, and most of them have a job. A lot of them have a job, and almost all of them in the developed world certainly have a job. Um, so yeah, anyhow, the, the f idea that automation replaces jobs, especially in traditional manufacturing automation, we're not putting a robot down there that's building a chair completely by itself or something like that. But automation has never stopped jobs. Um, there are still, I, I don't know the union count right now, but like auto workers, there are thousands of robots welding together cars and have been for years. And yet there are still a lot of auto workers. And I would venture a guess that it is just as many as maybe even back in the assembly line days, just because the efficiency increased so the cost could come down so that more people car could partake of it, so the whole thing just got bigger. It's not, you cannot think in a fixed pie way. And the fixed pie way is a really scary way to think because you end up trying to defend the thing that you've got. It becomes very tribal, um, which is also a problem in the 3D printing industry. Um, but the that tribalism and that idea that this is all we've got and we've got to protect it prevents you from seeing how you can grow the pie. If you're growing the pie, it doesn't really matter if other people come in and do it. Like, our, our situation, I hope we have hundreds of more print farms around the world. Hopefully they are the same size as us because they help with this stuff, this communication and the working with the clients and training the industries to switch over to it if there are the resources there. So having more competitors 
creates a more robust industry to where more people can actually use it because there is competition. It's not like Slant 3D is the only game in town and I'm ticked at them, so I'm not going to use 3D printing at all. That's not what we want. We want a situation where Slant 3D's ticked me off, so I don't want to use them anymore. I'm going to go to this print farm and they can find a solution and then we bounce back and forth. Um, the 3D printing industry can grow so much from this idea that there's enough for all of us because there is, there's a trillion dollars of plastic parts floating around that we could be producing today. And we're not, because there's just not enough print farms out there. So that, grow the pie. Don't work to defend your slice. Make the whole thing bigger and your slice will grow with it. And while you're making it bigger, if you're the one making it bigger, you can probably grab some of the new pie that's showing up. Anyhow. Um, a comment about that because people have this fear of automation and efficiency and it's mainly brought on by movies but doesn't really exist in reality because automation has been around for forever. A steam engine chopping wood is exactly the same as chat GBT writing a line of stupid code. Anyhow. Um, filament. Filament, filament, filament. Ah, our, we have released our first price reduction on filament. Um, the subscription has gone from $59 down to 58. <laughs> the reason for this, um, it's twofold, and there'll be uh, some more trickle down from this here in, in the, the future here. Um, but the, the first part of it is uh, doing reuse spools. Uh, mixing in reuse spools gives us um, a, a reduction in the cost of our spools, uh, which we're pushing through right now. Um, and then there is, uh, we've got a bug, bug in the studio. Uh, we've got a, uh, did, did I get it? Did anybody see if I got it? I think I got it. But uh, we reduced the price of filament by a dollar from being reused spools. And then the subscription spools will be changing to uh, NGO 4043, which is a lower cost PLA. But for black, it's fine because it doesn't change any of the color. The, a big benefit of 850 is the fact that you have that crystal clear look. Um, crystal clear is paused right at the moment. So we will be going to 4043, which will reduce our raw material cost a little bit here. Um, as we start ramping that up in production here for filament itself. So the, the subscription filament spools, I didn't get the bug. <laughs> it's floating right there. Uh, the subscription spools will be translating over to standard PLA. Uh, with this will be an update of temperature. We also released uh, or announced that we'll be doing angled wonk or tangled wonk. This is why we didn't want names so similar. Tangled wonk. Um, wonky filament um, is perfectly printable. It will still be perfectly printable, but the spool, it will be transition filament. So like going from white to black, you'll have the gray in between. So the spool will be kind of various colors of that gradient. And then uh, some of the spools will be wound, like a little bit overwound or wound uh, crooked or out of spec um, to where it's, it's still usable. It's still usable. It just doesn't look good. It's like an ugly apple. You can still eat it, but it's just ugly looking. Um, so yeah, the main thing with angled wonk is that it will not damage your printer. It will not have blobs in it. It will not jam your machine. It should not jam your machine. Um, if it does, please tell us. Um, but, uh, if, if there's any of those other errors, we always want to know when we're sending out thousands of these spools. Um, but the, uh, where was I going with that? Yeah. Angled wonk will basically be burner filament. Um, and it will be released at a lower price uh, than regular stuff, and it will be just come at intermittent batches. Um, so it should we'll probably have some of it released here in like two to three weeks. Um, we're we're storing it up right now. Um, we just or we we're keeping our horses in a row. We have other work to do right now rather than shipping more filament. Um, so the transition filament we're bagging and storing. Um, but it will go out soon. It does look like the, um, the ceiling solutions that we had are working. A few had damage from mainly being driven over by a truck, um, but moving to the reuse spools and our, our next generation of spools seems to be fixing it right now so far from the feedback that we've gotten. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the plastic spools have a lot of other problems other than just being plastic spools. Uh, logistically, they're very troublesome. Uh, so anyhow, 
Uh, subscriptions continuing to go out. So thank you all who have purchased subscriptions. Uh, do let us know if there's any issues. And of course, uh, with the subscription too, if you want to, you can cancel anytime. Uh, we're not going to do some kind of subscription trick. As soon as you um, want to cancel, you can cancel. Uh, you should be able to go into your user profile and cancel it. If not, just shoot us an email and one of our team will go ahead and cancel it for you too if you're not able to find it there. Um, okay. Lastly, new products. The Etsy integration. Uh, the upgrade, the version 2 Etsy integration will be coming out in two weeks. Everybody who is currently on the current Etsy integration, thank you so much. Um, and pr again, appreciate all the feedback on that. Uh, hopefully we're getting your Christmas orders out quickly enough. Um, but the new Etsy integration uh, will be going out next week. The, the tentative launch date is Friday of next week, uh, where we will be releasing it. Um, it is built on our new version 2 API, which is probably going to be quite impressive in a number of different ways. It fixes a lot of issues with software um, in this category. And also with our previous iteration, I mean, I would say it's probably five or 10 times better than our first API. Um, and this, this API, by the way, too, we will be releasing publicly in the near future. Uh, but it is going to be the bones of the Etsy app for, at first, um, both as kind of a, a large scale real world test of the API itself while it's still under our control. And then we will uh, turn it loose with documentation to any developers out there who want to use it. Um, if you want to sign up to be notified of when the API is released, uh, there's a page on the website for that stuff. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it right there. This is going to be a fairly quick show, guys, because I, I got work to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, comment down below if there's other topics that you want us to cover or top, like weekly topics that you'd like us to include inside the podcast. Um, we're going to, of course, right now we're in this weird kind of a time where we're, we're really busy with our core work, which is printing large numbers of parts for people, especially right now at Christmas. Um, oh, side note too, our, our quoting team is really quite backlogged right now. Um, and we deeply apologize, but it's taking about three to five days to get quotes out right now because there's just been a large influx of them in this season. Um, right now, production capacity, um, if you're wanting on like the mega farm and stuff, we are pretty solidly booked right now. Uh, almost all of our partners and like the Etsy integration and everything else have all scaled up to such a degree to where we don't have a lot of excess capacity even here in the mega farm with all the machines that we have. Um, so lead times are decently long right now. And there's, there's almost no hope of doing like a, a rushed order. I need it tomorrow. That's probably not feasible right now. Um, unless you're, you really have a large checkbook or something like that, because you would be replacing and usurping and causing all kinds of problems other places. <laughs> um, but yes, we, uh, we are working on getting the Austin factory set up in, starting in the spring. Um, we expect that probably in the new year we'll have to double to triple capacity again, which is kind of what we did last year. Um, but uh, we're, we've got the plans in place to do that. Um, testing videos, testing videos will continue to kind of trickle out and regular videos will kind of trickle out. We have a few design for videos. Sorry about this week, guys. Um, this previous week, I don't think we published any videos except like some shorts and stuff. Team's just really busy with other stuff right now. Everybody, we've grabbed a lot of people. Um, so even like the marketing team is sometimes helping pack boxes and that kind of stuff. So I apologize for that. Uh, we will get back into the rhythm of it. Please enjoy our past videos. We have a pretty decently sized catalog of, I believe, like 250, maybe even 300 videos. So stay entertained for like a month. It's fine. Uh, find out what you want to find out. There's a lot of good information there, though our new Design 4 videos are really quite good and have some good topics that people need to know about. <laughs> I was I was talking to the guys like there a few of these topics we wish people knew more about. Uh, so anyhow, uh, let's see what else have we got. I'm gonna wrap it right there. This is gonna be a fast one, fast edit, fast post, all the rest of it. We're just gonna go right there. Uh, but yeah, let us know if there's any other topics that you want in the podcast, any other topics you guys want in videos. We'll get them stored up, and in the new year, we'll be going back to uh, three to five, maybe even six or seven videos per week, uh, starting in the spring. Have a great day, everybody.